Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will learn how to implement end-to-end -end DevOps on a Monstack application. So you can see the architecture diagram here, which is prepared by Aman Pathak. So Aman will join us later in this video during the demonstration part. What we are going to learn is each and every step that is mentioned in this architecture diagram. It can be the Terraform part to automate the infrastructure, Jenkins part to automate the CI using code quality, dependency check, file scanning, image creation, image scanning, and also updating the deployment manifest. Or it can be the Argo CD part to automate the continuous delivery onto the EKS cluster. Along with that, we will also learn how to set up monitoring and custom domain for this Monstack application. Don't worry, it might look complicated at this point of time, but towards the end of this video, you will say this entire architecture is simple because you will learn each and every step practically. And don't worry, at any point of this video, if you feel struck, we also have a complete documentation. So I'm going to share the link of this documentation in the description. So you can find each and every step along with the screenshots. If you're struck somewhere, you can refer to this documentation. And not only that, you also have GitHub repositories, which will have the complete scripts. It can be the Terraform script or even a simple shell script that we are using in this video. So I will provide all the links, the documentation scripts and the GitHub repository in the description. So you can watch the video. And if you're struck at some point, you can use this as your reference material. Now, before I jump into the video, let me quickly tell you, this is not the only end-to-end -end project on this channel. We have many other end-to-end -end projects. Last week, I have uploaded an end-to-end DevOps project on Golang. Previously, we have done end-to-end -end DevOps implementation using Azure DevOps. We also have end-to-end -end DevOps implementation using AWS DevOps and much more. I will provide the link in the description, which is a link to the playlist of this channel where you can find all the end-to-end -end DevOps projects. Now going back to the topic for today, everything in this project is automated. So it's a three hour long video covering every step. To make it simple for the viewers, I have divided this video into three parts. You can find the timestamp of each part in the description. Wherein part one, we will learn the automation of infrastructure that is required for the project. What does that mean? So using CI CD, which is using Jenkins and Argo CD, this Monstack application will be deployed on a EKS cluster. You can see the architecture at the right side as well. So we are going to deploy this Monstack application on the AWS cloud in a EKS cluster that is within a private VPC. So we will not be creating anything manually. So what we are going to do is we are going to set up everything using Terraform. So in the first part of this video, what we will do is we will launch a EC2 instance. This is going to be manual. So we are going to set up a EC2 instance on the AWS cloud. And within this EC2 instance, we are going to install Terraform, Jenkins, where using Jenkins, we will run the Terraform scripts. And this Terraform scripts will create a private 
VPC on the AWS. And within this VPC, we will have a EKS cluster with two nodes, worker node one and worker node two. Along with that, a jump server where this jump server will be useful for us to connect to the EKS cluster to perform any administrative activities on the EKS cluster. So no one will have access to this EKS cluster except the gem server. So this is the first part where we are going to automate the infrastructure. Then in part two, we will implement a comprehensive CI CD using Jenkins and Argo CD. Now, why did I say comprehensive? Because in the Jenkins CI part, we are going to have multiple stages. So if you see here, first we will check out the code from the GitHub repository. So this GitHub repository, end to end Kubernetes three tier DevSecOps project. You can find the link in the description. This GitHub repository has the application code, which is a MERN stack application. In the first stage, we will check out this MERN stack application. Then we will perform the code quality analysis on the code. Then we will run the dependency checks using OWASP OWASP. And then we will run the file scanning. We will create Docker image. Then we will push the created Docker image onto the ECR because we want to use a private container registry, just like how organizations do in real time. Instead of using Docker Hub, we will use ECR. Then we will perform Docker image scanning. I should say container image scanning using the Trivi. And then finally, we will update the new version that is pushed to ECR onto the Kubernetes manifest. So the Kubernetes manifest will be updated with the new version. We will be running the code quality analysis using Sonar, where we will do the Sonar scanning as well as gating. So that's why I said comprehensive, because we are going to cover all of these things in the CI part. Then in the CD part, we will deploy once CI is done, we will take that Kubernetes manifest and we are going to deploy them onto the EKS cluster using Argo CD. Again, we are going to see the Argo CD setup, configuration, installation, everything. Then in the third part, the most awaited one where we will learn first thing is how to use a custom domain. So for this Monstack application, once it is deployed onto the EKS cluster, we will learn how to use custom domain, how to integrate that with route 53 of AWS. Again, I am telling you, don't worry, we will cover each and every step in this video. So you will find it simple as we walk through each and every step. Then once the Route 53 integration is done, we will move towards setting up Prometheus. And we will use Prometheus as a data source to visualize a, the complete observability metrics using Grafana. So we are going to do all of these things in today's video. Now you might find this architecture diagram little easy to understand if you put all of these pieces, part one, part two, and part three together. So you can see initially we will be using Terraform in the part one. This Terraform scripts will be triggered through Jenkins to create complete infrastructure that is required for the project. That's why we have Terraform at the first place. Then we have CI CD in the second part where we will use Jenkins for the continuous integration. 
and we will use argo cd for the continuous delivery of a three tier architecture mon stack application so that is what this part of the architecture depicts then we will implement the custom domain and monitoring part which will be the part 3 of this video so you might have one final question but abhishek what exactly is this mon stack because lot of people here are devops engineers i totally understand you might not be following with all the latest frameworks all the latest programming languages that are in the development space of course mon stack has been there for a while but recently you might have noticed that mon stack is used very popular popularly in the development of web applications or any kind of applications so what exactly is it so i am going to explain this in a very very simple way end of the day any web application that you write or any web application that you use today has three tiers so there is a front end then you have back end and then you have the database layer so there are only three tiers any programming language any framework that you use the web applications has three tiers front end back end and database this layer is also known as the presentation layer and this layer is also known as the business logic layer so in different applications developer use different programming language for front end back end and different kind of database for example if one of the developer is using spring boot right predominantly when we say spring boot application so that means back end is written in spring boot developer might be using front end which can be react or angular then database can be anything like mongodb or uh, sql postgre anything like that or oracle something like that now over the period of time writing web applications have become very simple and the choice of the programming languages have also become very simple for the developers now writing web application is not that difficult these days and mon stacks make it even more simple so mon stack basically means the front end is written in react js then the back end back end part framework that is used is express js just like how python has framework like django node js has a framework called express js where back end programming part is written in express js then to deploy this for the server related things in the mon stack node js is used then the database part mongodb is used now combining all of this m from the database layer which is mongodb then express js for the framework to write the application node js which is used to uh, for the servering or deployment part and react js so together it is called as m e r n which is mon stack all of these things here if you notice whether it's react js or whether it's express js or node js they all belong to the javascript family that makes mon stack applications very fast very simple to write and they are all in a single family so it's easy for the developers to write these applications now this is about mon stack and what is it for you as a devops engineer so if you get a mon stack application then it is even better for you because writing docker files for this mon stack applications is very very simple and straight forward now if you look at our application today so again 
using the link in the description, you can find this end to end Kubernetes three tire DevSecOps project. If you go to this folder called application code, you can see that there is backend and frontend. If you go to the backend folder, so we already have the Docker file because it is very simple to write the Docker file for the MUN stack applications. Click on that. You will see. You just have to run this command node followed by the JS file, which has to be triggered. You can get this information from the developer. So I'm not focusing on the Docker file for this particular project because the Docker file both for the backend and even if you look at the front end are pretty straightforward, right? It is almost similar because they all belong to the JS family. So the Docker file in the front end and the Docker file in the back end might look similar. That is why containerizing one stack applications is very, very simple. Now, how about database? You might ask, but Abhishek, do we need to write a Docker file for the database as well? It's not required because we are going to deploy MongoDB Docker image, which is already available publicly. So we are going to use public MongoDB image, right? So we don't have to write any Docker file for that. So towards the end of this video, you will see this to do file. I am attaching this to do application, which is a three tire architecture one stack application. I am providing the screenshot here so that you can see what are we going to deploy towards the end of this video. Now, without any further delay, let me introduce Aman to you and Aman will start with the first part that is creating the infrastructure that is required for this project. So starting with creating an EC2 instance and on that EC2 instance, we will run the Terraform scripts which are available in this GitHub repository, which will set up the complete infrastructure required for us AWS VPC along with the EKS cluster. So let's get started. Thank you so much Aman for taking your time out today on Sunday to help our subscribers. I am super excited for this project. Yeah. Thank you Abhishek for the lovely introduction. I can say so. Hi guys. My name is Aman Pathak. I'm working as a DevOps senior and having 2.6 years of experience in this domain. And I usually write uh, me uh, like blogs on my article uh, on medium, I can say, and I usually active on LinkedIn. So like I try to help DevOps engineer or freshers to get transition in this domain. That's like my special kind of hobby. Like I used to help people. So yeah, that's what I like I can say in my introduction. Now directly we can switch to demo. So like the first step is to I would say we are going to create a Jenkins server for it. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I will create a Jenkins server and uh, like, let's say I'm giving my server name is Jenkins server. I am going to use Ubuntu 2022. Uh, 22. Okay. So the Terraform files that we write will be executed through Jenkins, right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. So I think yeah, all the things can be automated, but uh, like these yeah. kind of things I'm doing because uh, people can observe that what kind of things we are doing. Otherwise, everything will be automated. So like we are here to learn, right? So yeah, it will be easy to understand. So I'm going to use like T2.2x large. I can understand that it's huge, but eventually we need it because uh, our server will take a lot of things. Yeah, we need to install a lot of things. So then after that, I'm not going to use any key pair. I can easily just go with pro proceed without key pair. Uh, and I will going to use SSM for it. And VPC, I can take a default VPC for it. And Got in it. the, yeah, I will uh, select the existing security group or I can create a one more security group where I will like open few ports in comparison of that. So I have a security group, I can say, yeah. So this one security group, it has around, uh, I think two to three ports open. Uh, one first one is 8080 port and 90, 
नाइनटी फॉर सोनार क्यूब आई थिंक फॉर सोनार क्यूब इज नाइनटी नाइनटी और नाइन 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 ग्रुप यू जस्ट ओपन uh the jenkins port and also the port for the sonar cube right sonar, because right. so we, we are, are going, going to run jenkins and sonar cube on that instance yeah exactly yeah and i will provide uh, the storage 30 that will be 30 storage for that 30 gb then here the main thing is that i am instance profile so i have created a cre- uh, like a new profile where i am providing administrator access access right now as this is not a best practices because we need to follow the least privilege permissions yeah. but uh, like for the practice uh, we are going to provide administrator access because a lot of things we need to access like ecr and uh, other things like s3 bucket or maybe a lot of things we need to access so yeah so like if you if you want to know how to create a like i am instance profile so you can create a simple create role and you need to attach like ec2 then you just need to provide this administrator access and it will create a instance profile for you for you you just need yeah. to provide the role name so i am not going to do that because uh, i have already created it so then after that uh, there are a lot of things we need to install in our jenkins server so we are going to use our user data now i do have a f- so file like basically what you have done is you have disabled the ssh access for the jenkins because you don't want to log into the jenkins instance rather you have created a uh, user data so that whenever the ec2 instance is created this script will run and exactly. this script will install jenkins on top of that it will install sonar on top of that right and yeah, whatever so, things are required yeah Perfect. so i will just list all the things that is uh, going to install so if you go through this so it's installing first of all jdk which is a prerequisite for our jenkins mm-hmm. then it will install jenkins then after that we need a docker as well so Got we it. are going to use uh, because we are going to build images and push images so for that we need docker so here we are going to install docker then we are setting up terraform over here itself mm-hmm. so we are going to install terraform here itself Perfect. then aws cli we need it so for that we are going to install aws cli then we are not uh, like installing sonar cube directly we are going to use uh, like container for it okay so for that uh, there is a like command to run the sonar cube container which is running on 9000 port hmm. then after that trivi we need to image scanning so yeah trivi going to install perfect so you have installed everything through the user data and let me tell everyone uh, this is the best practice because uh, you can directly disable the ssh access so that nobody can access the instance and whatever you need you can put that in the user data perfect yeah so now i am going to click on launch instance and right yeah so like we need to wait for i think 1 to 2 minutes to yeah come up the instance aman meanwhile uh, if someone wants to get this script that you have put right uh, yeah. do we have that on the medium blog or uh, we can also put that on yeah. github everything is on the github repository and in the blog itself i have put it over there so Perfect. there is no need to like go anywhere else so everything is on the like resources GitHub i will repository. provide yeah rep- repository in the description of this video so yeah won't be an issue so like now we can connect at least because the session ma- manager is up so yep. if we will going to like click on connect so it will take us to the instance now things will take time like as we are going to install i think 5 to 6 uh, tools so for that it will take time but yeah. uh, just wanted to like show you few things that it's installing i can say so yeah everything is working now there is a one command yeah htop so here we can see like uh, what are the commands running so we can see few commands that we are using to install our few services so that we can see here like J- J- jdk is installing right so it's yeah. it's showing me jdk command yeah. so you are seeing the processes basically that are running uh, yeah. on the machine and you can already see that the jdk java related Uh, jre process uh, is already running and i think docker is also running so exactly. services are coming up yeah, exactly yeah. so do- docker is also running and lot of things like 
will be going to install within i think 4 to 5 minutes it will it won't take much time yeah 4 to 5 minutes we need to give perfect then yeah meanwhile i can try it for the java version whether it's installing or not just give me a moment i think so we are using session manager to connect to the instance uh, for anyone who doesn't understand basically we have disabled ssh access so instead of connecting to this machine through putty or something what aman has done is aman is using the aws ui itself through the session manager switch the user to ubuntu and now trying to verify if the things are running on this machine or not jenkins docker sonar cube etc yeah like this kind of things i have seen in my even uh, organization as well that uh, yeah. they are using ssm manager because they can't provide each and every one uh, like pam files so yeah it's good way i can say so they if they have a access of ec2 instance so like they can access those instances with the help of ssm perfect that that's the main thing so like the java version is like java is installed i can say and let's see let's see jenkins is it installed or not aman can you increase the font size a bit okay is it visible yeah. right yeah yeah it is good now so jenkins is already uh, installed then we can check the version of docker okay so docker is also installed perfect can run docker ps okay, got it we can check terraform so terraform is also installed amazing okay then we can try something help kind of thing so version yeah so aws also already configured i can say that's just my bad yeah so there is one more thing like i'm waiting for doc sonar cube now sonar cube is also running Perfect. it's on port 9000 and trivi the last thing was trivi so i hope trivi is already installed here yeah. so trivi is also like already configured okay so now, we have using the user data we have installed java we have installed jenkins we have installed sonar terraform uh, cli aws cli sonar and also trivi everything is up and running and we have verified exactly yeah so like that's it that's it about the jenkins server i can say now we are going to uh, create a pipeline to deploy our infrastructure which is eks cluster and other networking services okay so for that yeah for that i will go like i will copy the public ip of my jenkins server and the access service is running jenkins. on port yeah. i will going to access the jenkins now i need to have so this will provide me the password for the admin so you can see here hmm. this is the password hmm. then i will provide the password to here perfect yeah i will like, keep this password somewhere because maybe it will need somewhere so mostly like i will go with the install suggested plugins uh, instead of going select plugins to install so we can understand what kind of plugins we need in our this de demonstration yes. so i will click on install suggested plugins and it will like install some of the plugins so like there is one more thing i just wanted to let you know that uh, there is was like there was a stage view uh, that like initially that was there in the jenkins but now we mm. need to install manually right so like, yes, there is yes. an update from jenkins so we need to install that as well perfect so right now it's installing these things we need to we need to wait for yeah so yeah. basically it is better to go with uh, suggested plugins otherwise you will have to wait for a lot of time figure out each and every plugin and sometimes you might miss few things so it will mess up exactly right so like i will uh, i am creating a user rather than like following by admin because yeah. it's good to have so it's good to create it so i'm just providing the things so like Great. according to it i can provide and i will like then we can click on save and finish and we are ready to start using jenkins yeah. yeah yeah so like everything is like there now jenkins server is ready now we are going to like 
click on manage jenkins and we need to install few things or we need some plugins for that so mm -hmm. like now our main agenda is to uh, deploy infrastructure over aws so for that we need some plugins and we need to store some keys in our credentials so we are going to do that okay so Got for it. that first of all i will create a uh, like plugin i will install two plugins that is important to do that hmm. uh, so basically uh, aman yeah because we are going to run the terraform scripts through jenkins and yeah. end of the day through terraform you are trying to create resources on aws such as eks cluster so for right. that now what you are doing is you are configuring the required plugins right exactly yeah so yeah so for that uh, there are two plugins that we needed the first one is aws credentials that will help us to like store the credentials in only aws site okay, okay. then the second thing is there is a pipeline so it will like work with aws apis okay. okay yeah so let me just aws pipeline aws if you write so you will get these two plugins and we need to install these two plugins okay yeah then it Perfect. will take time around one minute to install it then we don't need to restart it i don't think so like because it's fine yeah. everything yeah. is configured already so yeah now we can see now we we are going to store few credentials Hmm. uh in our credentials okay so we are going like we are under the manage jenkins and we are going to click on cred credentials perfect and yeah so here we need to store our credentials we will click on global then click on add credentials and here you will see one more option which is aws credentials after installing the aws credentials plugin okay got it got it yeah. so yeah. that's so why we were installing the plugin exactly yeah so okay. we can set up our globe uh, like scope for that if you want to make it system or global so currently i'm taking it global and id i am providing it uh, aws credits so the same id will be used in our jenkins pipeline to fetch the credentials okay got so, it yeah now i need aws access key and secret access key so for that like uh, there is a i am for that yeah we are going to like we will go there and we will like install iam for that and so i have this, already uh, uh, did you grant uh, admin privileges to this iam user or yes yeah the access okay. keys i have that has administrator access okay. so yeah so i have already uh, like created both the aws uh, configured id right so i am hmm. not going to regenerate it so if you want to regenerate it you can like create on a create access key more than two you can't create uh, like yes. there is a limit you have a maximum of two access keys so yeah i need to disable one and i then i can create a new one more right perfect perfect yeah currently i am taking uh, access keys from my terminal let me just check so i will go to my jenkins server and i will provide the access id this is my access id and then i will copy my secret access key and Perfect. i will uh, like paste it here over here now you can see the please specify the secret access key so like uh, that's fine we we can ignore this error because our secret access key is uh, like right so yeah we don't need to think about it so we Perfect. can click on create okay yeah then after that uh, we are like ready to create our pipeline for it okay okay so but uh, before that uh, there is one more thing i can say uh, that uh, we did not configure terraform for our jenkins server so for that we need to like uh, go in a tools section or hmm. i think let me check so we are going to search for terraform so it is under uh, systems uh, system configure configure global settings and path for our Perfect. tools okay so for that i will search for terraform mm -hmm. yes but uh, we are unable to find uh, terraform because we need to install the terraform plugin okay plugin yeah because in, eventually we are going to run terraform apply terraform plan commands so yeah, yeah so for that we are going to install terraform plugin yeah. that is our plugin just in case someone feels how aman aman is able to figure out these things very fast because he works as a devops engineer 
um, you know, during his day-to-day -day activities, uh, he will be doing these kind of things. So it is really fast for him, easy for him. And he has also done these kind of things a lot of time. If you are struck somewhere, don't worry. The documentation provides very clear information of each and every step. Yeah, so our Terraform plugin has been installed. Now we can go to our systems configuration. Let me check. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so it's in under, I think I was miscoming this. If it's in under tool section. Yeah, so now Terraform is there. Yeah. Now the main thing is that how can we install Terraform automatically? Like there are a lot of op options provided in installer. So in like I will go with the thing where we have already installed Terraform in our user data. Jenkins server, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I need to know like where is my Terraform? Like I need to know the path of uh, my bad. Where is Terraform? Yeah. So like the Terraform is presented here in the directory. So I will just uh, do one thing that I will write the name of the tool terraform and instead of terraform automatically i just i will just provide the directory for directory it. of terraform the directory will be slash user slash bin and terraform okay then it will it's it's showing me that uh, terraform is not a directory on the jenkins controller but perhaps it exists on some agents yeah right so it it is a, like master is also considered it as as an agent. agent because yeah because there is no agent right so we yeah. can like go with that and we can click on apply and save yeah so Basically, we are using a single Jenkins node architecture where we are using Jenkins as master as well as slave or master and agent. We are not creating another agent for Jenkins. Exactly. Yeah, right, right. That's right. So, yeah, uh, we now we are set to deploy our infrastructure. So just uh, give me a moment. Let me yeah. fetch the repository for it. So there is a repository where we have a code, Terraform code. So perfect. Now I can say that uh, th there is an infrastructure. You can also check that it's what it's doing, that Terraform validate plan apply. And it is like going to create few things related to that service. And we have like, I have followed the modular approach for it, that we are going to create EKS, IAM, required IAM roles. Then after that, VPC is also there for that. Then I'm going to create a my like my required services for it okay yeah and also there is var variables dot tf yeah. yeah i think if we go through this entire uh, terraform files it itself will take a complete another video so what we can yeah, do yeah. is you know because this is a public github repository and there is also a video on the channel where i have also done the same thing how to create eks cluster using terraform i'll provide the link of that video as well as this github repository so that anyone who is interested they can go back and see how to create each of these terraform files uh, because it's a long thing we will just proceed with yeah, exactly. execution exactly so like i have also like there are two kind of things like i have already configured github actions also and there is one more thing jenkins files is already there so we are going to deploy our eks cluster with the help of jenkins files so i'm yes. going to copy this entire code for for it and Perfect. i will we are going to also like check the so infrastructure job we are going to create uh, i am going to click like as a pipeline i need to create it and then click on okay perfect now i need to provide the there are two options like pipeline and pipeline for SEM. as i have already uh, like my jenkins files is present in this directory so i can do the same thing as well otherwise okay. i can use a uh, pipeline script so right now i am using pipeline script so we can understand what exactly is happening yeah. So like I'm just giving an overview. What are we going to do the things? So there are two parameters, which is the first of all, it's it's the environment. And the second thing is the choice, like apply, plan and destroy. What do you want to like do? Then after that, like, let me tell you the environment thing that we are going to do that uh, we have uh, TFVerse file. So if you want to deploy your EKS cluster in a multiple environment, mm. so you can just create a one more TFVerse file and then you can uh, deploy your uh, EKS cluster in a other environment, but you need for, for that, you need a, another state file, Got uh, it. TF configurations for that. So yeah, like you need to set up another backend file for that. 
but yeah like i just use like i i normally use this kind of things for my for my understanding so then there are like stages for that which is hmm. like one of the like preparing for the repository then it's pulling the uh, the repository okay the, this is the repository that it, it's pulling now we were using like we have installed aws cred credentials plugin right hmm. so the plugin is required here you can see here just give me a moment let me turn it off so as you can see that aws creds it, now it will fetch those uh, credentials, credentials from here so, so you will say that how it's like uh, getting those things like how will you apply those commands on a particular aws account so with the help of aws credentials we have provided all the access keys and secret access keys hmm. in this credentials and so region, this this particular section is actually connecting your jenkins with the aws, AWS and right. executing your terraform uh, because you have provided the aws credentials yeah exactly right hmm. and then after that it will run the first command which is terraform init and as you can see that uh, it, it will find main.tf or tf file so in hmm. the root folder it, it's not present so there is a eks file uh, eks directory there it it has main.tf and other terraform configuration file so we are going to uh, run the terraform init and plan and apply commands in this directory so for that i have provided one argument which is csdir child directory which is stands mm. for okay Very so good. i will yeah for for that i will install like initialize the terraform repository or it will install terraform plugin uh, along with the aws provider and lot of things okay got it then after that uh, there is a another stage which, which is, is validate which is like we normally know that it will check the syntax error, error or no, like it hmm. has or not then after that there is a action now we have set up like i have set up the plan or like actions according to the work okay so if the action is planned so it will run these commands that it will run terraform plan and if it has terraform apply then it will run this command if it has terraform okay. display it will run this command so this is the choice and like if like people can't do that like they can they can't choose other options but still i have set up the else condition as well so yeah okay. that is all about so, the jenkins so pipeline. basically when you are running this jenkins uh, pipeline there they will have an option a choice uh, variable where if they are using the choice called plan then aman is saying that line number 44 will be executed if they use the uh, choice button and select the option as apply then line number 46 will be executed so that's why aman has written that uh, if condition block so that you can use the same jenkins pipeline for each terraform action rather than creating one pipeline for terraform plan one pipeline for terraform apply he has done everything in the stage action yeah exactly so yeah we are ready to apply these things and we are going to click on save so initially maybe it will fail because it's showing me build now so it should show build with parameter so if you are going to apply as soon as possible so it will throw yeah. an error or maybe it will take default environments because i've already set up few default environments so maybe it will run perfect so let's see yeah it, so, it will just take some time yeah yeah now the thing is that you can't see the stage view like that we used to see in our like uh traditional jenkins right there is a yeah. green thing yeah boxes we can say so for that we need to install a one more plugin for that which is a stage view hmm. so yeah i will do that just just wanted to show you what yeah whenever you are struck just go to this documentation we have everything there and also you can reference the github repository exactly so yeah. i hope now it has nothing i can say but yeah, yeah we have we have a lot of things that it was running let's see what it was running maybe it was running terraform plan because i have already set the default things. yeah default so terraform plan it was running and mm -hmm. yeah everything is there uh, it it was creating policies uh, other like required services add ons it will create add ons for eks cluster then it will create eks cluster then node group will be there like yeah. on, de on demand node group is there and spot instance so there we are like we can do uh, one thing uh, we can do one thing aman we can go back and create that stage view plugin and by the time it. we come back i think uh, we will also have that choice variable yeah we have already have built with parameters <laughs> yeah now we have we do have it. Just yeah. yeah, let me install that plugin. Yeah. So, that. 
so we are going to enable the stage view so this is the pipeline stage view plugin we need to install it okay then it will take i don't think so that much time again okay. so yeah so now the stage view plugin has been installed or you then you can see that the uh, all the five stages has been completed now we can see build with parameters now we are ready to like as we can see that what kind of uh, resources we are going to deploy so around 37 resources going to deploy uh, by now it's 38 uh, i've added one another yesterday so yeah so 38 resources will be added yes Perfect. Uh, okay then we are going to click on build with parameters and like environment is dev now one more thing that it will take a dev.tf where file because i've said the environment dev okay. yeah then there is a plan uh, apply and destroy so i will choose apply for it and it will take like time lot of time around 15 to 20 minutes to take meanwhile yeah. we need to set up uh, like uh, our jump server as well uh, so like jump server will be created in the same vpc so we need to have a a vpc so now this terraform will be created like this terraform will create vpc first so we are going to use that vpc so let me just why we need the... jump server aman what is the yeah. requirement for the jump server yeah so jump server is need needed because uh let me just show you one more so you are able to see this diagram right yeah on product io so you can see that our cluster and worker nodes both are private which is mm -hmm. like we need to follow in the organization so yeah. for that we need to access our EKS cluster or we, like whenever we run AWS EKS update kube config command, right? Hmm. So that is all like used to update the context of Kubernetes. So yeah. we can't access private clusters uh, outside of the VPC. There is like one not drop like that is a one security thing we need yes. to follow. Yes. Yeah. So jump server will be there for for it or like other people or other organization used sandbox environment for that. Yeah. So they like they will connect with the EKS cluster for a particular like minutes or particular session, right? Particular amount yeah. of session. So like I am like making it simple. So we are going to create a jump server, and that jump server will be in the same VPC. Hmm. Now the uh, then we can we will be able to connect with our EKS cluster. Also, I will try to connect with my local. So you will be able to see the error, like what kind of error we are getting while connecting with Super. EKS private EKS cluster outside of the VPC. So basically, what you are doing is because the EKS cluster is in the VPC, we cannot access the private cluster by default. So you are creating a jump server so that whoever has access to this jump server, they can communicate with the EKS cluster. And as exactly. a DevOps engineer, you will restrict the access to the jump server to only people who, are, who need to have access to the EKS cluster. Exactly. So I will provide like uh, whatever you can say that uh, PAM file for that or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, again, we are going to do the same thing. Like we are going to enable the SSM for it. Perfect. But, yeah. So right now VPC, I was talking about, so it has three VPC. So this VPC, like dev medium VPC has been created by, you can say through Jenkins. So yeah. in the logs, we can check that it has created VPC creation complete. So now we are ready to. Uh, deploy our jump server because right now we don't have EKS cluster, but it's creating. So it will yes. take a lot of time. So meanwhile, we are going to configure jump server. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So right now I'm going to create on a launch instance. Then I will give a name, which is jump server. Same Ubuntu image. I will use 2022.04. Then after that, I will uh, choose t2.medium because it's fine with, with, the, with it. Then Perfect. yeah, again, I'm not going to use any PAM file for it. Now here we need to like do the modifications in the networking thing that we are going to click on edit. And then I will choose my dev medium VPC and I will like choose any public, uh, a public subnet for it, for it. And mm -hmm. it will enable all, already the public IP for it. And we can create a security group for it. And now this time we don't need any security group. Like we don't need any port for mm -hmm. that. And yeah, 30 GB I will take because it's fine with it. Yeah. And in the advanced details, I will again provide the administrator access to my EKS uh, jumps over. So it will be able to uh, configure, like take the things from AWS resources. It, it will use AWS resources. Makes then sense. Uh, we need to have some like installation in jumps server, jump server as well. 
so for that like i can say there are three things we need to install uh, three to four things we need to install hmm. i can say just give me a moment let me check so yeah these are the four things the first one is aws cli so like we are going to run aws eks update kube config command right for that hmm. Hmm. for that to get need... the basically to get the kube config of that exactly. kubernetes cluster yeah. exactly then kubectl command we need because we are going to handle eks clusters and resources with the help of kubectl so kubectl will be there then helm we need it so like because we are going to use helm in our monitoring part so for that we need it then okay. eks kubectl for it uh, we are going to use to create some service accounts and things few things so we will see that so yeah that is like all the user data and we are ready to like launch yeah. the instance one thing that you can see is aman is trying to do everything in the style how people do in the organization like you know he is relying more on the user data rather than logging into the instance creating step by step what happens if you do that way then your activities will become manual if you have user data even after one month aman can take that user data and just whenever he is creating all these resources he can rely on the user data rather than the manual steps exactly so like it, it is like should be approach because i don't want to configure each and everything from manually and it yeah. will be good so like in my opinion uh, user data is one of the rich uh, service uh, yeah. or like feature of from aws so that would be yeah. good yeah yeah so i think jump server is also already configuring let's try to like, it's taking time to install register with the ssm agent Perfect. yeah so like it's yeah it's up and ready so let's see so like for like we, we know how to log in with to the session manager so we need to have a we need to switch to the ubuntu user because earlier it was in ssm agent or root and then after that we are here now i have installed few services aws cli so yeah aws cli is already installed here then we can check kubectl is installed or not it's taking time Okay. yeah i think it is stuck the sessions manager yes like sometimes it it don't work i'm, I'm not sure maybe because of <laughs> small server or yeah you know. and uh, already it's it's in process process to install a lot of things so that's why exactly i think the yeah. process is busy yeah yeah so meanwhile we can see the pipeline so it around it 6 minutes so i now i think it's creating cluster yeah it, it's creating cluster okay great Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, Aman, can you show the GitHub repository uh, mm -hmm. and show where is the dev dot tf so that we can just show okay. them, like you know, from your Terraform GitHub repository. Yeah. So yeah. this is my repository, and uh, in the EKS dev dot tf words, I've put it here. Perfect. So yeah. So like I've just like set the environment. It's a uh, dev. So you can also manipulate from the jenkins file also if you want according to that then i have put it the region so there are a lot i don't think that you need to put each and everything in tf bears like hmm. you can set region outside of the tf bears i can say okay so according Got to it. the requirement we we used to do these things then after Got that it. now the main thing is if i talk about uh, there is a one eks cluster enable right so there is a flag if you want to enable it in dev environment and you want to disable it qa environment so what you will do that you will create a qa.tf bash file and you mm. will just set it up false so it won't create in like uh, in the qa environment so it will create all the things but cluster won't be enabled in qa environment Perfect. so that kind of things you Toggle. can do yeah mm. with the help of tf bash file so that is like main advantage of it then Thank after you. that like on demand instance types i put it or spot instance type so like by following cost effective approach then you can set up the max capacity max min capacity for that so right now it's it's a unmanaged node group because mm. uh, i don't want to make it managed sometimes uh, we can do with the help of cluster auto scaler or carpenter so that will be good to understand that how kubernetes cluster auto scales its nodes so that will would be good thing then add ons we have added like vpc cni i will need it for the networking interface then core dns and proxy and ebs csi dri driver for my uh, el uh, what, uh, elastic block storage so according to this we we can add more add ons or we can reduce the add ons accordingly so whoever wants to run the uh, terraform to create eks cluster 
you don't have to change anything typically you can use aman's repository itself and i think it will yeah, still yeah, work you, you can just fork this repository and you made made your changes according to uh, according to your requirement i can say yeah. and everything is yeah set so, perfect yeah yeah so let's see whether it's cube control is control is installed yeah cube control is installed in hmm. case also i am expecting yeah so eks cutl is also in installed let me check helm the main thing is that helm should be there so yeah helm is already installed so all the things are now uh, installed now i'm waiting for my kubernetes cluster so now yeah. maybe it's creating nodes in my opinion yeah so it's creating on demand nodes and spot node so you can like uh, configure one more thing in terraform which is depends on according to that but right now i'm uh, in creating both nodes at at one time so that kind of things like it it's a best practice to follow it so you can do that as well very nice yeah so yeah i think we need so to while around. this is creating uh, mm -hmm. like you know can we discuss about the next steps that we are going to do so that you know we don't have to wait here for the next 5 10 minutes what will be the yeah, next because, steps yeah. yeah what will be the next step i i can say so i uh but i can say i want to configure each and everything from infra side first so okay. for that i am going to configure uh, let me just show you the diagram again so there are two things we need to configure the first one is uh, argo cd and the second thing is application load balancer controller right hmm. so uh, once we like uh, we get the kubernetes cluster up and running so we are going to install our argo cd and aws load balancer controller then okay. after that uh, yeah monitoring part will be like in the last i can say then after that we are going to jump on our source code the main thing is that we need to deploy our source code so for that we are going to configure sonar cube then after that we are going to like create a pipeline for back end front end both and we also meanwhile we need to create a ecr repository so like if you find i can create ecr repository right now or yeah. or yeah or, we can wait or we can wait for the Uh, because it will be confusing for people yeah, folks yeah. so that's the main thing i wanted perfect to know. perfect so yeah that, that's like i can say about this and okay it will take time and then yeah argo cd will already like then in the end we will create a, a applications uh, there will be four applications for front end back end and database and the last application will be for ingress like i i want to deploy my ingress controller or uh, not ingress controller my ingress uh so that will be done through argo cd itself then Perfect. yeah so like one more thing i just wanted to tell you that uh, you can also like if you want to make it proper automation then you can install argo cd and application load balancer with the help of terraform itself so there is a like provider kubernetes and yes. help right yes. so that thing you can also do that but uh, like again i i would say that you need to understand how to configure argo cd manually the first thing should be there then only you can like do the automation like this is like my opinion i can say yeah so okay then after that yeah like in the end we were going to configure prometheus yeah will will end with the project i can say so yeah let me check my eks cluster is still is maybe it has create it should create some node itself so we are using kubernetes version 1.29 uh, currently because 1.30 is latest so that's why and also we don't need to create open id the main thing is that people used to uh, create a uh, open id connect with the help of aws cli so that thing already done by terraform itself yeah. so that that's one of the main point i can say then you can check the resources like you can leverage this dashboard itself it, it's also one of the like good monitoring basic monitoring for your for your kubernetes cluster so you can the check the user that. interface for your exactly. kubernetes cluster exactly so you can see that your uh, cni vpc cni add-ons are running exactly then you can check the replica states according to that and compute in the compute section you can see that uh, two nodes have been created node groups have, have been created and both are active now i can see that maybe uh, it has success it, it it is it will be going to successful soon so yeah so you can see the node groups and nodes so now we are ready to i would say add the command that cube config update config command okay hmm. so yeah so pipeline is successful i can say now we are ready to run the 
command so this is my uh, i think it's a jenkins server i can say we need to go to the jump server yeah jump jump server so the, the main thing is that i just wanted to uh, show you that we are not going to able to connect with eks cluster uh, if we are going to like connect outside of the vpc right yeah so that thing i wanted to show you then we can jump on that just give me a minute so let me check it's a jenkins server yeah so it's a jenkins server and i will first of all i will configure things uh, like i will run the aws configure command so it won't give me any error so let me just copy the commands yeah so now we are just trying to verify that apart from jump jump server from any other server you will not be able to access exactly. the uh, kubernetes cluster eks cluster yeah exactly so uh, yeah so i can see like aws s3 cp like if i do the run the command this so i can i will be able to see all the s3 buckets right so it's working aws is it's working now i am ready to like configure my eks cluster thing so update queue config there is a one command for it and cluster dev then i need to set the region for it yeah okay let me check aws eks update queue config we have aws so if you don't don't know the command so you can just simply search it on the google you will find it so update queue config okay i think i made it no it's i think name yeah that's not the cluster that's a name perfect yeah so now you can see that uh, we are getting added new context so it it doesn't mean that it, it will be going to connect with the eks cluster i will try to run uh, now yeah kubectl but uh, kubectl is not installed right now uh, if i run the command so yeah it will show me that kubectl is not so i will just uh, install it within a minute it will install so then you will be able to see that it will be not going to work with but still yeah we need to check it yeah so cube cutl command cube ctl get nodes yeah Let's exactly do. so yeah. yeah cube cutl is installed now we are going to run cube cutl get nodes it's not able to connect to eks yeah it will like time out and kind of error it will show so yeah according to jump server now we are going to jump server directly hmm. so we will match the error or not error we are going to match the output what are we getting from the jump server so Got it. you can see in the left pane uh it's a jump server in the right pane this is a jenkins server okay got it yeah so i am just configure the same thing here hmm. so this is explaining us the vpc architecture as well that if you are in a private vpc you need a instance in that private vpc vpc something like a jump server only then you can connect to any resources in the vpc it can be eks cluster or your database or anything yeah so you can see the error that uh, there is an error couldn't get current server api group so which means that you are not able to connect with the api itself yes so that's the main thing i can say so yeah that's fine with it now let me just copy the command that i was using oh, yeah my... so this error was on the uh, jenkins server exactly hmm. now we are going to run the same command on Uh, jumps over now we are ready to run the command kubectl get nodes and we are ready to see the nodes. awesome awesome okay. yeah so yeah Th that like now we are ready to so like we are ready with our kubernetes cluster mm. and everything is working perfectly i can say uh, if you want to see all the things so yeah cluster ip service is running for from kubernetes so yeah like we have set up our kubernetes cluster and jump server right now now we are going to uh, jump on the next thing which is aws load balancer controller and argo cd so mm. like there is a simple commands i have added uh, we don't need much uh, like things so we need to just run those things and yeah we are like fine with those things perfect 
Let's just give a moment. Let me check the commands. Okay. Yeah. So first of all, uh, to create a, or configure a AWS load balancer, we need to have a service account. So it will create a load balancer uh, from the EKS cluster. Okay. So this is a command EKS cuttle. That's why we have uh, uh, installed EKS control tool, right? Then cluster name, you have to provide the dev medium EKS cluster. Then you need to provide the load balancer controller role name. Hmm. So uh, yeah, that the role thing already configured. Okay. So like there is one prerequisite prerequisites to do it. Let me just show you that. So there is a role. Uh, not role. Let me. So there, there is a policy we need to like install it. So that is already created. So it would be fine, right? Like uh, the things already configured, but uh, I'm just showing you the things. Just give me a moment. Yeah. So you can see here that uh, we need we need to have some few things. So this command will what it will do? It will just uh, install like it will fetch the policy. Hmm. Okay. Let me just do that so it will be easy to understand. Hmm. Yeah, so now it will just it, it has downloaded the IAM policy for AWS controller. So you can see in the IAM policy, there are configurations which are like provided by already AWS itself. So we don't yeah. need to do anything with the help of like with, within that. So in, after that, in simple yeah. terms, what we are trying to do right now is uh, EKS cluster is a Kubernetes cluster, right? And within the Kubernetes clusters, we have pods running, for example, you have the ingress controller running within the Kubernetes cluster. Now, how will a pod inside your EKS cluster, that is the ingress controller pod, create a load balancer that is another AWS resource. So for that, what we need to do is we need to tie up the service account of the pod with a IAM user or a IAM role. In this case, we will use the IAM role and using the policy, we will grant permissions to the Kubernetes pod so that it can using that service account, create a load balancer. So basically we are tying up the concept of Kubernetes with the IAM. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that's right. So we are going to like, have, we have already installed our policy. Hmm. So like, still, I will. I will try a few commands. So it will create a policy. Now this policy Perfect. will create. Okay. So let me just run the command. So we will get an error that it has already exist. Okay. So Perfect. duplicate names are not allowed because it already has the same policy. You can see here. Yeah. So yeah, we are ready to create a service account with the help of yeah this command EKS cuttle service account. So even like also the service account al already created. You can see that service that exists in Kubernetes will be excluded used to over right? Because it has no task. So it means that service account already configured, right? So the Terraform has done the creation of policy and service account, right? No, no, that doesn't uh, actually I was working right earlier okay. in that project. Perfect. So that's why it was already created. So if, if you want that, I can delete it. And again, if no, I that's will, fine. Right? That's fine. So yeah. it will do the same. Thing. But a few things you need to change that you need to provide the uh, your account name instead yeah. of mine. Then yeah. you need to change the cluster name. So like these two things you need to change. Then you after will that, figure that out through the documentation. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. Then after that, if you like run the command to get the service account, so hmm. you can check that we have a, a load balancer controller should be there. Just give me a moment. Let me check. Service account. So I think over right. Yeah, so we, we need to, I think, provide the flag. Yes. Yeah. So it will create. So it should uh, like show in this namespace that we have already the service account, AWS load balancer controller. Otherwise, otherwise we will get an error for that. 
or let's delete and create it will be easy yeah yeah that, that would be a yeah that would be good i can say so like in the cloud formation you will go so like each and everything will be done from cloud formation so hmm. yeah you can see that uh, there are some things that have has been created so yeah that is i am service account and this the this, this service account you can hmm. see aws load balancer controller hmm. so i need to delete it perfect so once i will delete this service account so i don't think so there will be more yeah so now we can run the same command again yeah we can start from policy.json probably right hmm. uh policy so policy is already there right it's already there okay perfect policy is already there uh, now we need to like run the command to install uh, to, to create a service account right hmm. so i will just run this and now it's like it's waiting for cloud formation stack to implement this service account so we can also check here that it will be in the progress yeah so it's creating the service account for it and there are events we can check hmm. it's creating role then it has logical ids and there are a lot of things it's creating and we can see like it will take around 1 to 2 minutes for it and then we'll be able to see our service account this is actually why you need that um, iam oidc connector actually this is where it comes into picture exactly so i have written one thing in docs if you see mm -hmm. so i have i need to configure with the help of like i need to associate yes. oidc provider okay so mm -hmm. as i have already configured in the terraform repository in the code so i don't need to run this command that's the main thing got it exactly so create oidc provided like if you are using this repository eks github action repository so you don't need to like run this command and you need to observe that if like oidc pro provider is already configured so i i can directly simply create service account got it after creating policy okay so yeah that's the main thing now if i check whether the uh, service account is there or not so it should be there now you can see aws load balancer controller 47 seconds ago okay so now load balancer controller service account is there now we, the next step is to like create a we are need to uh, add the repository which is helm repository for eks then we hmm. are going to install our let me do it one by one perfect so yeah. helm is required uh, because using helm you will deploy the ingress controller onto the ingress eks cluster and R1. perfect exactly right yeah so this is a repository of eks so there you will see lot of things lot of controllers or lot of services for, from aws so i will just run this this command and helm repo list if you run so you can validate your repository has been added now we are going to install it so like Perfect. i i don't think so it will take much time then i will install the aws load balancer controller hmm. in the eks this is the place and cluster name i need to uh, change right so this is my cluster so according to that i need to change the things got it yeah and service control uh, service account name will be the same so we don't we don't need to change it all these commands are in documentation so you can take from there exactly dev medium eks cluster and now now it's already installed uh, all the things in that so we can check whether our aws load balancer controller is running or not it around it will take 2 uh, to 3 minutes uh, or less than that hmm. so we can directly check it i think it's again start so you can see so the main thing is that if like if the ready status is 0 by 2 if you are seeing so it means that mm. you have not associated service account mostly have like figured out those kind of errors mm. from like lot of folks so if you are facing this kind of issue that your pods are not getting up so for that you can check service account so now like aws load balancer controller has been configured so now we can jump on the next thing which is argo cd uh, we can't validate right now aws load balancer controller uh, yeah right now pods are running so there is no issue with that yeah but uh, we need to while we create uh, Uh, ingress resources so at that moment it will create a load balancer so it means that yeah it's working okay aman uh, can you show like mm -hmm. you you have granted this uh, service account with iam privileges and using that policy.json can you show what permissions you have granted in the policy.json so that people will understand how this 
load balancer controller can actually create a aws alb exactly. load balancer no issues so hmm. see uh, let me just little bit so you can see here hmm. so it's it has a condition this is the policy that i have created so it has a condition that it will work on it elastic load balancing service okay this Perfect. is a service Perfect. then of, after that there is what kind of actions it will uh, do so describe account attributes describe address uh, mostly it will limited to load balancing that it will create a load balancer it will describe the load balancer target Got it. it will create target groups as well according to the ingress path that we are going to write ssl policies like it will in, you can also attach ssl policies right ssl certificates with the help mm -hmm. of this controller so that thing you can do, do. and Makes it sense. will work on all the resources and apart from that if you want to attach any cognito thing that you can do like we have a lot of authorization and authentication thing so you mm -hmm. can use that wav like we have option wav in aws load balancer to implement it shield so there are a lot of services i would say uh, we can use all the and permissions also, are related to uh, alb and ec2 ALB. most likely yeah yeah exactly because a lot of things are integrated with alb so we are going to use it so Perfect. if we create a listener also it can create a listeners according to your application you can add tags target groups conditions like it will create a tags as well right Perfect. So, yeah so this yeah. Th this are i think from aws itself so there are a lot of things and yeah. it is like you don't need to modify yourself i can say everything yes. is there according to that you can like you don't need to change it anything yeah you can get yeah. this policy.json from aws also yeah exactly yeah so i have provided already the link so while you will download it uh, you can see there is a command so this will create a policy and this will uh, download this in your terminal so then exactly. you can view the policy okay perfect yeah. Now the next step is to configure Argo CD. So once we will do that, then we can jump on the source code thing. So yeah. So for that Argo CD, we are going to again we need a, a repository uh, like Helm repository. We are going to use it. But uh, hmm. currently there is a like simple thing I can say uh, for that. So first of all, like there is a one prerequisite which is I will create a namespace for Argo CD separate. So it will like. It won't take uh, like confusion. The main thing is that to get rid of confusions. So I will create an Argo CD namespace for it. And then there is a manifest file from yeah. Argo CD itself. Yeah. So it will it will create all the resources related to Argo CD, like yeah. services and pods and exactly. according to that. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, it will create, you can see that role binding. You can just use the latest version. Uh, Aman was using 2.4.7. We can use the latest version as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So th this was, I think, previous documentation. So that's yeah. why. So according to that, we can use. Then after that, uh, yeah, a lot of things it has created. It has been created. Networking thing, services, deployment, service, config maps. It has created secrets. We need it. So it has created service accounts. Like we don't need to install or create a service account from ourselves. So that's the beauty of Argo CD, I can say. So Perfect. yeah. Now I can like simply let me just clear the screen first. Cuttle get all hyphen Argo CD. So now we can see all the things are up and running. Like pods are yeah. up and running, services are there. Hmm. Then deployments already is there. Yeah. So everything is there. Now I need to expose my Argo CD. Like I need to access my Argo CD. So for that I usually use a. Uh, what we say load balancer type instead of node port. So uh, I will just simply expose my Argo CD to the load balancer or outside of the internet. Got it. So, so you are just changing the service type to load balancer. Exactly. Okay. So there is a service Argo CD server. Okay. So for that, mm -hmm. I will edit it. Edit SVC. Perfect. I need to provide the namespace. Then you will see in the in the end that you can also like check it on target port like the container port it's 8080 but we don't need to like got it check it so the cluster ip the main thing is that i we need to change this cluster ip to node port or load balancer so currently i'm using like load balancer so i will just expose it again it's just stuck so let me refresh it got it so just to repeat uh till now uh, Aman and Aman was using Helm to basically uh, install the AWS load balancer controller within the Kubernetes cluster. And instead of using Helm, Aman has directly used the Kubernetes manifest file to install Argo CD. Exactly. 
so yeah we will be going to change the type of service mm -hmm. so like before uh, like uh, before exiting from here i just like will go to the load balancer so i will need to check that whether it has created anything or not hmm so currently it has any no load balancer okay so once we have exit from this it will create a load balancer perfect so yeah you can see service argo cd server edited now we can check it will create load balancer and you will get the dns from here very good okay one thing to okay. mention here uh, now the load balancer is actually created by the cloud control manager component of eks cluster it is not created by the load balancer controller that we have installed right because exactly. aman has changed the service type to load balancer who is receiving that request that request is received EKS. by the cloud control manager component of eks perfect exactly. so there is i think ccm kind of thing right yeah. uh, that the component yeah. in present in eks cluster yes so yeah now it, it, it will take some time then yeah. after that we are able to get it so yeah i think meanwhile let me just check yeah it will take a minute yeah it will take a minute that's why Yeah, now it's working. So yeah, once you will get this, your connection is not private. So you can think that yeah, Argo CD is up and running. Now we we will click mm. on Argo CD mm. and then click on proceed to it. Perfect. And the UI of Argo CD you will be able to see. Mm -hmm. Take time again. Yeah. As a meanwhile, we can fetch the password of Argo CD while the UI exactly. is loading. Exactly. So username is admin and password we need to fetch it and we need to decode the password for it so you will get secrets mm -hmm. so the uh, the initial admin secret uh, we need to do that so we can just simply edit it So this is the password. Uh, I can say. Perfect. I will copy it and I need to decode it with the help of base sixty four. So I will use uh, echo for that and base sixty four. Then base sixty four it will take decode. So you will be like you will get the pass real password. I can say. To log yeah. in with the Argo CD, and now I will log in here. And yes, Argo CD is accessible now, and we can create application and according to like our application. So like Argo CD, like we have set up with the AWS load balancer controller and Argo CD. Now we are ready to uh, jump on the source code thing. We now we, we are... need to like create a different file. Infrastructure part is done. Basically, yeah. now whatever is required from the EKS cluster components that are need to be deployed on the EKS cluster, we have done everything, and we have not done it manually. We have used Terraform, and through Jenkins as an orchestrator, we have executed the Terraform files. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So. Yeah, the the two two things I can say that that has been re remaining, which is the first one is source code and the second one is the last one is monitoring part. Yeah. So yeah, let's start with first uh, source code. Uh, so like 
i need to create few things so let's let's jump on this for this let's jump on the uh, yeah manual approach or i will i would say block thing so we can able to see what the things are we need to done we need to do so yeah the next thing we need to configure our sonar cube so earlier we have seen that uh, sonar cube was running right uh, yeah while we was checking let me check yeah so sonar cube is running on the port 9000 so i but i will just i will just fetch the public ip of my jenkins server hmm. we'll just copy this public ip and i will just hit the 9000 port perfect yeah to log in the sonar cube server you need to have a login password and both like are the same admin, admin is the login admin is the password yeah so click on login and you can create old password let me do it okay now like we have created the things uh, according to our application uh, now we need to set up the sonar cube we need to create few tools i can say uh, just give me a moment let me check so first of all uh, we need to generate a token for it uh, mm -hmm. so uh jenkins will able to connect with a uh, sonar cube okay so for that uh, there is an administration administration section uh we'll click on it and then security and users will go go in it and then we'll click on this token update tokens and like i can provide a three tier token we'll say and according okay. to your expire you can like set up the expiry and we'll generate it now i will copy this and i will keep in in my docs again a sonar cube so maybe i need it in future for creating multiple projects yeah so now we are ready to do that then after that we are going to create a webhook kind of things mm -hmm. so yeah, let, let me just show you why we need webhook so you can simply like uh, understand that webhook are used to notify external services so jenkins will be external service whenever the project analysis is done so jenkins will get to know that yes the analysis is done perfect and there is no any a uh, bugs or smell i can say in the code so Got that it. kind of thing will be done with the help of webhook so we need to create a webhook for it and let's say i have given a name to my webhook is jenkins and then the url will be the public, public IP, ip right and yeah sonar cube so this is the jenkins server the main thing is that jenkins server will be affi affiliated from sonar cube so i need to have this is my ip and all the other things will remain same Just got it yeah http yes let me check okay let me uh there is a single slash uh, http yeah. after is that it? yeah no no after http colon double okay. slash got it. yeah got it thank you vishesh for that yeah so yeah sonar cube is there now we can like click on create we don't need to provide secret for that uh, okay. right now yeah okay. so we can click on create and the webhook is like fine now we need to create a projects the main thing is that uh, it will fetch all the code and it will do the analysis or code quality analysis on a particular code so we have two codes front end code which is written in react js and the back end code is written in node js okay. perfect yeah so for that i will create a project and i am not going to use any like predefined services uh, mm -hmm. so we are going to use it manually so it will understand it will be able to understand that how you will create uh, these projects okay so we will create on manually and Got it. this is my front end project let's say i, I will mm -hmm. provide it uh, you can set up the branch so yeah default thing will be same don't no need to do anything mm -hmm. then i will create on a setup click on setup now this again the same thing that i need to do the analysis with the help of what so with jenkins github action so again i will go with the help of locally i will click mm -hmm. on locally so we will understand how things goes now the thing is that we need to provide a token for it mm -hmm. i have already generated the token so i will click on user existing token and i will just copy my token which is here and i will copy paste the token here and will continue now my code is not in maven not in gradle on dot net so my code is in different so i will cl click on other then my os is linux and now you will get this thing that Got how it. to do 
yeah how to do the uh, code quality analysis so in jenkins file you need to write uh, put this uh, script so i will again copying this and writing this is for front end perfect so you are able to see my uh, docs right Google yes 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 so this is for front end and we are ready to it to do it and now we are going to create a next another project. project yeah for back end right so i will create a create a project click on manually then i will write back end click on setup and the same thing i will do click on locally and i have already a password you can keep separate password according to the projects hmm. okay then click on continue and yeah other linux now it like let me just copy and then you will see the changes what it has so everything is will remain same but the one thing is that will be project, project okay. so mm. in the project key the front end and back end key and uh, for login it has provided the tokens perfect uh, the same token will be there and the next thing is a host url so what will be the host url so that thing will configure from jenkins itself so yeah, we have configured the sonar queue part from our side now we need to store like our sonar token on jenkins credentials now the next part is i would say uh, to like we need to store a lot of uh, tokens lot of tokens or secrets in our jenkins yes so yeah the next stage will be there because we are trying to follow best practices as much as we can so yeah so we are going to use credentials hmm. and first of all i will create a credential name secret text and secret will be sonar to will be my sonar token yeah then after that uh, just where it is okay sonar. uh this is a secret and i will uh, write the id as sonar token sonar hyphen token so it's, okay. it is for okay sonar token now i need to add a few more tokens that is uh, related to account id that is like according to best practices i can say i mean uh, these are all devsecops practices right yeah devsecops where, yeah, exactly. where you are trying to integrate security approach into devops hmm. exactly right so i will add the account id here and i am keeping it and also it will like easy, it will be easy for me in my jenkins pipeline to call it and use it uh, and concatenate with other things as well so yeah i will show you that concatenation thing as well so this is account id uh, of my aws account then now the next thing before like creating any uh, repository before any like before going any creating any uh, next credentials we need to create a ecr repository got to, it to store our uh, front end and back end uh, docker images right hmm. so that i will search ecr repository might be it will be confusion for someone like but uh, we need to do it that's why so i have already created a like repository let me just delete it and if you don't know then we can delete it and we can recreate it so yeah now we can create a we will going we will be going to create a private repository instead of public one so yeah. for front end i am just simply creating a front end application as we don't have much microservices so that's why i'm creating a simple name with a simple name then for the back end i am creating the same back end perfect yeah then this is the repository name for front end and for back end now what i will do i will just create a like secret text for each repository so the this is the front end i would say and this is the ecr repo one okay so this is the id and uh, in this id we have front end hmm. okay perfect now yeah the next thing is we will go into the same for back end uh, secret text will be there so you are and just providing the secret name i um, mean the value as front end in this case you are providing the value as back end that's it exactly right yeah there is no like rocket science in that yeah. so you can create it this is used wow. to connect to ecr because jenkins uh, it has to push the image that we are going to create to the ecr so that's exactly. why we need ecr credentials yeah yeah exactly now the next thing is uh, if you know that in the last stage we need to change uh, like we need to update the tag of aws repository right in the kubernetes manifest file yeah. uh, let me just let me just show you so it won't just just give me a moment and to an project yeah you 
can see here it's a fine so yeah front end let's say we have a deployment file hmm. now you can see this is a image right so we need to yes. update the tag as well so for that we need to push the repository uh, push the changes to the repository right for that we we need to have a github github credentials for that yes okay so the last credentials we need to create which is i github credentials i am going with the username and password simply and the like, username will be my this and i will like if i want to make it this and then after that i will use my personal access token for it or else you can use secret context as well according according to the need i can say mm -hmm. so i am putting my personal access token here and i will provide the tag of id github hyphen app yeah so you can create your github personal access token, access token. yeah uh, yeah yeah by going in your profile section and you can like i think people are aware of it right uh, so yeah we can we they want... can refer the documentation that's fine yeah. yeah exactly yeah that's the main thing so yeah so we can add the credentials here hmm. for it yeah so everything is set up for the credentials i can say now the next thing is to configure the tools that we need to do for our jenkins for our source code pipeline so we need to install few plugins mm -hmm. so let's do that and the first one will be uh, docker all the related things docker that are uh, this plugins integrate jenkins with docker so now like if i need to run uh, docker command so for that i need docker then after that i need a docker pipeline because i need to create a like build i need to build the images right for that yes. docker pipeline will be there and yeah like uh, there are a lot of uh, plugins docker build step docker api i have written in that so like sometimes you don't need it and according to the project you need it but right now i'm just clicking it or like i'm just installing few things so four tools related to docker we need to install perfect then the next thing is yeah then the next thing is uh, node js because our application is node js based so you can see node js we have uh, we need to install node js then after that we need to install uh, ovesp which is a dependency check which will done uh, a lot of dependency checks according to that so yeah we are going to install it as well then after that uh, sonar cube which is the one of the important for code quality analysis so here yeah. so total around 3 3 to 6 se seven plugins we need to install right now mm -hmm. i i will be going to click on install install and then a yeah, lot of will be already completed yeah everything is completed now plugins has been in installed now we need to configure all the like tools uh, like we need to configure all the tools by going into the tool section under the manage engines like Perfect. as we have already set the pass path for terraform right in the earlier section hmm. so the same thing we need to do here okay so yeah we need to provide the path for the uh, yeah. things that yeah. we have installed yeah yeah, yeah. okay uh, abhishek can we take 5 minutes break if possible yeah yeah sure sure we'll we'll stop hmm. pause recording kar le okay chala yeah so we are going to like configure the tools like that we have installed earlier so, hmm. so the first one will be i would say uh, node uh, node js okay so, yeah so i will just search it node js and you can see node js installation so i will add the node js and then provide the node js name so like okay. let's keep the simple thing uh, just provide the simple name node js and then how do you want to install it so yeah install from node js dot organization it's it's fine so yeah let's things as it is for node js okay yeah then the second thing will be sonar cube so yeah sonar cube scanner installation not ms build installation so i will click on add sonar cube scanner and i will provide the name of it so like try to keep the thing same as i am doing because we are going to keep the same things in our jenkins mm -hmm. file as well got it yeah so now in uh, we are installing it from maven central so yeah we are going to not any like we are not going to made any changes for that mm -hmm. then after that we are going to uh, dp check we are going to configure dp check so yeah dependency check installation click on add dependency check uh, this is for uh, ovasp right ovasp right ovasp yeah. so i will provide the name for it and i will like i will just provide it to the 
automatic installation automatically from github.com mostly so it will fetch the latest version of it perfect yeah then the next thing will be docker so i will provide the doc name of the tool docker and install automatically from docker.com would be good hmm. yeah so that's uh, it for all the configurations for tools then we, we can click and apply click on apply and save then after that the the main thing is that we have not configured the webhook from jenkins itself for sonar cube so for that we are we need to do that by going into systems under manage jenkins perfect so yeah so for that i will search sonar and you will see sonar cube installation right so mm. i need to uh, pass few things uh, the first thing will be add sonar cube installation so i will click on it and now i will provide here sonar server so previously it was sonar scanner sonar hyphen scanner now it will be sonar server so it is different because yes. uh, there will be two stages the first one will be code quality analysis the second one will be quality gate quality gate means that it will check that you have like you have a red card or a green card red card means that you have a lot of code smells or right and if you have green card that you don't have any like anything in your code like you don't have any bug in your code so that kind of things you can see right yeah, so, i think it will okay. make more sense once we run the pipeline people can exactly. actually see yeah yeah exactly then after that uh, we need to provide the server url uh, for the sonar cube itself so i will just copy the because the same ip has the jenkins server yes i will provide the so it's like it's good as compared to localhost try to provide public ip of of your server then after that we need to provide sonar cube token so we have already now we are using it right so we have already stored our sonar token here and yeah we are set with our sonar cube and we can click on apply and yeah save perfect yeah so now we are ready to uh, or like create our first pipeline that will be for front end i would say so i will like just create doing three tier front end and click on pipeline and okay now now i will like uh, copy my pipeline let me just copy it from here application so this is the repository you can navigate to jenkins pipeline code okay then there are two pipelines for the front end and for back end so first of all i think that pipeline is for front end so i will copy the front end code okay so different so, jenkins pipeline for each application we yeah, have a front end we have back end exactly there are slight change slight changes so that's why i put it in a different so now let's let's just uh, i will brief you the pipeline what it's going to do so first of all jdk yeah it, it doesn't need actually i need to do some changes so we are not using any maven application so for that jdk is not needed so tools yes. node js is needed then the next thing is uh, sonar cube right so sonar home now i was saying sonar scanner right so mm -hmm. that thing you need to keep because it will be used in our application then it will fetch the credentials for account id and ecr repo as it's a front end application so in ecr repo 1 a front end was stored then region will be us east 1 and the, then it will create a entire repository uri for ecr because Got this it. is the uh, pattern for ecr repositories right mm -hmm. then we are start with our workspaces uh, like we are going to clean our workspaces then we are going to pull a, a github um, repository and it mm. will rip, uh, Uh, clone this repository and then after that it will do the sonar cube analysis now let me just copy this stage so like if you remember that we have copied this one right so you can see that uh, we are using few things we are not going to use host url and uh, login thing mm. because it's already there because uh, that way we have configured uh, uh, sonar cube in jenkins so we don't need to provide host url or lo login thing login. because we have already provided sonar tokens and uh, you remember that we have already provided in uh, the low, uh, public ip and the 9000 yes yes comes configuration right so we just need to provide the project name so where it will reflect the all the changes so according to that as i have created the project name uh, the project name was front end and back end not three tier front end okay so i will just make uh, one change uh, in the pipeline hope it clears right uh, yeah it's clear it's clear yeah yeah so i will just uh, do few
few changes uh, in the project name i will just remove the three tier and in the project key i will do the same thing so now okay. it will yeah now it will sync then the next thing is quality check so once mm. like let's say you have some quality like uh, quality analysis has been done now mm. it will check that how can you restrict or uh, how can you fail the pipeline for that so mm. for that it will check wait for quality gate about pipeline calls and it will check the uh, bugs if there is any bug so it it's it's like a darbari kind of like thing uh, that will check the card so mm. it, if you have a red card so yeah it means that you have a smells in your code so it will fail your pipeline that kind of things should be there in yeah. devsecop basically uh, basically once you scan your code what is it you want to do with that scanning okay in the previous stage amana has performed the sonar code uh, scanning which is basically the analysis part now let's say that stage has found out that there are 10 code smells so how do you want to react to that code smells do you want to abort the pipeline if the code smells are more or if your code is not as per the uh, quality standards right that is what aman is doing in the quality check so that is basically a gate exactly so the next part is owasp dependency check so the main thing is that it will take lot of time i can say around 15 to 20 minutes so i will try to make it uh, i will try to just comment out uh, what do yes. you think abhishek yeah Can yeah let's try? let's comment out this but... it will work there is no issue with that you can just yeah. keep on comment you hmm. you can try to uncomment this and try to run yeah everything will work then the next thing is trivi file scan now it will fi- do the file scan not image scanning first of all we need to check is there any other like unnecessary files has been yes. uh, present in the front end code so that kind of a uh, file scanning will be there in trivi then once the file scan will be completed the next step would be image building yes so in the image building i am like i am a put in a particular directory uh, where the application code let me just show you the application code this is my application code so see uh, we never keep each and everything within the same repository we use re- separate repository for application code even for front end and back end we we'll yes. have separate repository so that kind of practices uh, would be like there in organization but uh, right i am just doing a, it a demonstration so i am just keeping it in a simple repository same repository okay so in the front end i am just there are docker file will be present uh, again i am saying docker file won't be present in the uh, source code because you know uh, developers are are not aware of the docker file maybe they will delete that file or maybe they will manipulate something with the docker file so usually we keep separate devops uh, rep- repositories for that so now it will do the image building with this docker file okay and then it will also have some commands docker system prune so like it it will have if it will have previous repositories or previous images docker images so it will delete those images to uh, we can say uh, save the storage the main yeah. thing is that the and the container thing as well and then after once the like image will build build then also we have ecr repo name so yeah you can see that Content, we have said yeah back end hmm. then after that uh, it will push that image to aws ecr and for that it will need a command aws ecr login for that then we do, we don't we are not providing any secrets over here okay because we have already uh, aws credentials for that hmm. uh, set up in jenkins itself then we are going to tag our dev- repository with the hmm. ecr name okay and then we are going to push our repository once we are going to push our repository then we can we will be able to like scan the docker image hmm. so for that you can also use ecr image scan if you want docker scout is there but currently i am using trivi image scan for that and yeah so it will like also store the uh, result in trivi image.txt file if you want to check out it you can Perfect. check out it yeah then the next thing is that see uh, the trivi image is if the trivi image scan has been successfully done then we are ready to update our tag in the kuber manifest file which was earlier i was saying this right so this is my front end deployment yaml so it will update this uh, tag okay and currently i am updating it with the help of build number so if my build number would be 1 or 2 so Perfect. according to that it will push the images right and there basically is a... it is required uh, because you know i have also explained it a lot of times on the channel as well so mm-hmm. if you look at the ci ci pipeline jenkins is running mm-hmm. 
once the ci is successful you will have a new image in the uh, ecr now exactly. argo cd has to pick up that new image okay for that right. there is a component in argo which is called image updater either you can use that or the most commonly used approach is that within the ci itself once the ci pipeline is done usually people update that new image either in the helm values.yaml or in the kubernetes deployment.yaml directly so argo cd can recognize that change and it will pull the deployment manifest either through helm or the plain manifest and deploy it on the kubernetes cluster the new version is deployed exactly yeah so even like uh, the thing build number i have learned from your video as well even like you can also use a time stamp according to yeah. your requirement you can use whatever a uh, time yeah. stamp and hyphen branch name anything, anything. yeah and yeah. yeah. but it should be like unique uh, again like if you're running uh, your pipeline five times so for that you need to have a different uh, exactly. tag for that okay exactly then uh, we are going to config our uh, user name and email because uh, it's not a best practice or like but generally we we should use because uh, when we are going to see the changes that it should show me that uh, who ch- Uh, like who pushed the changes that it will show me that aman pathak devops has has been pushed the changes on that repository so yeah according to that it, it it's good and then there is a image tag i have like i'm using grab command for it so it will take the uh what's the tag name current the tag name it will mm-hmm. fetch and then it will replace the tag name with the set command okay perfect so it will, yeah it will change the set, uh, tag with the set command then it will add the deployment.yaml and commit that changes and then push the changes with the help of github token and github username that we have stored in our uh, credentials mm-hmm. okay so yeah we are ready to uh, apply our repository and we are ready to save it and let's Great. build it click on build so we don't need to provide any right now any yeah uh, now we are trying to build our front end yeah we are ready to like front end is building right now so we can go on the logs So for that, then so quality checks are like going on for the sonar cube. Very nice. Also, we can check uh, here itself. So for front end, it will it will reflect all the changes, all the analysis here. Yeah. Now you can see that. Oh, Very nice. There is no like sm- smell smells or other things. Code smells and analysis uh security review you can see there are two security hotspots so according to that you can like change j- change these things yeah and then we can that, share this report with the developers usually i mean we usually exactly. share it with developers because if they have to modify anything in their source code they can see the sonar analysis and they can do that yeah so now docker image building is performing as t- uh, trivi file scan has been done in Perfect. this stage then a docker image building has been going on so uh, npm install so docker file is running you can say let's after this we will configure argo cd for the deployment part right exactly for the deploy so like what we will do like we will just create a backend uh, jenkins pipeline which will done i think it's the same i can say it's yeah. a, like also the same thing i just need to do few changes in the sonar cube and all the things will remain same so Perfect. yeah the next thing is a uh, yeah, docker image building has been i think completed so yeah see it has i think uh, 293 vulnerabilities because the code is very old so that's why yeah, yeah you can fix uh, like according to that npm audit fix we can use so now tag completed and it is going to push the image right right now so to ecr see, yeah to ecr so let's see in our front end it will will have the docker image okay so the image publishing to ecr uh, in the particular stage we have the command which will publish the image to ecr and aman has already configured the credential so that now everything is done automatically jenkins is able to talk to aws and to ecr also exactly so the image has been pushed and trivi image has been going on uh, it's been going on so we can check now we do have 
repository and you can see the image tag because the build number was one so image tag amazing. would be one amazing okay then then you can see that could not find credentials so see uh i haven't uh set set up the uh personal access token separately i think so for that i need to add it then we'll be able to like push the changes to the to update the deployment file as well so just Got let it. me check, let me check the files for that so in the last stage when we are trying to update the image back to the github repository uh, the personal access, personal access token is missing so yeah yeah exactly so yeah we can like if if i will refer to the documentation i will i will get the thing yeah github so i i didn't i, I haven't added one uh, credential that was uh, let me let me do it just it's a good thing that it is failing so, so that yeah. people can also understand what is missing yeah. so why are you getting this error so that kind of troubleshooting we are expecting yeah so if you listing i think apis are not working of some things okay so we'll click on global and then i will so now this time i will use a uh, secret text and the secret will be my pad token for it perfect button access token then the id would be github because in the jenkins pipeline it is it's github okay hmm. so now this time you will see the same tag i would say i uh, just let me tell you that the commit was 14 hours ago okay so if the tag will remain same so i would say that maybe it won't push anything hmm. but yeah we'll try to run the pipeline at third time as well okay okay so you can also check that uh, sonar quality gate was pa pa passed right so let Amazing. me just meanwhile it it's running so let me just tell you sonar cube like was running and quality gate was paused for 4 second because it was checking that uh, do you have any uh, like smells in your code uh, severe smells i can say uh, if it has severe smells so it will fail the pipeline and then after that preview file scan was running uh, docker image building so you, now you can see that the code is same so that's why it's taking lesser time as compared to previous otherwise previous, yeah 1 minute 23 second you can see in the image building so that's the main thing and the same thing will uh, do the next stages so i hope so that now we are not getting any we won't get any error okay let me check what's the error okay let me it's a quite big pipeline <laughs> nothing add to commit but untracked files are present right so now you can see that uh, we are not getting error related to any uh, github credentials we are getting because uh, the image tag has been same right so that's why it's saying that uh, you don't need to push anything exactly so yeah i will just run run a, the pipeline again so it will this time it will push the changes i can say with the confidence i can say so yeah Okay. Now, trivia image scan. Let me check the console output as well. It's going to check out the repository success. So now Perfect. you can see that. Yeah. Now you can see that image update Im uh, deployment image to version three because yeah we have now changes so. now you you are saying that 14 hours ago was the commit now we will say that one minute or just now kind of thing yeah so we Perfect. now we have the third image tag okay so we have updated the image tag as well so i will just create a, a back end application like back end pipeline for it as well so that then we will forward yeah yeah so we will create a ci pipeline for back end as well and exactly. uh, once our ci is done then we can proceed with the cd part for argo cd which will not take much time yeah exactly then uh, in the back end i will just uh, i will just refer to jenkins pipeline code back end code is there now i need to do few changes in yeah. that so this is my back end pipeline so first of all i will i think i just need to remove jdk from here yeah then after that everything is set up just need to change the 
this one. Yeah. So because uh, our the, Sonar repository name is just backend. Yeah. Exactly. Sonar repository is name is backend. So we are ready to. Uh, can we uh, can we comment the o o o OVAS? dependency? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. Otherwise, it will take a lot of time. So we are going to build it. So it will take around two to three minutes, in my, I guess. So Sonar Cube analysis is done. Let me check uh, the projects. It's for front end. Or it's already done the same checks for that mm -hmm. analysis. Now we can check for backend as well. So you can see for backend it passed. And Sonar quality analysis was done from now. It's building the image. And the image has been built and ECR image pushing is going on. Yeah. Can we go to ECR once while this is uh, going yeah, on sure. so that we can show uh, so for front end? You can see uh, there was uh, three tags has been created because three images was, pu was pushed. Now we can go to the repository of backend and I think it's pushing the changes. Yeah. Pushing the pushing to the ECR image. Yeah. yeah. Again, uh, you could have used Docker Hub also, but the reason why Aman has chosen ECR is because we were using EKS. So just to yeah. be in the same uh, ecosystem of AWS, uh, Aman has chosen ECR, but you can use anything. Yeah, so mostly like it depends on organization, I can say. Yes. So yes. Yeah, according to that, like a lot of organization believe that we are going to like fully AWS eco-friendly ecosystem. We are going yeah. for. So that's why we are going to use uh, we are using ECR, so yeah. For backend uh, image tag has been like created. Image has been pushed. You can you can see that, and I I think the yeah. So the deployment file is already now changed. So let's check backend deployment dot yaml. So you can see it now. The push has been now, and the tag is one right. Okay, perfect. So yeah, everything is like now going well. I can say now we can go to the next thing, which is Argo CD. So usually we will create applications uh, by one and one but instead of that yeah that thing we can do even we can use helm as well but before going to that uh, i will set up the repository for that because i know that uh, there is only one repository for it so hmm. yeah so i will connect my repository uh, with the help of ssh and project will be default and repository url will be i would say this is my repository i mean ideally because it's a public repository, it is not it, needed. It doesn't need any. Yeah. Otherwise, you can provide uh, your username and password. Yeah. Uh, I think I have already configured that thing in blog. Right now, it's yeah. not a, a private, private anymore. So that's why yeah. I'm doing doing it. So, yeah. yeah. Now you can see that it doesn't have any like it's a public repository. So connection status is successful. Otherwise, yeah. if you're providing some like uh, if the pad is not working, so it yeah. will show some error. Okay. Yeah, we are ready to create an application. So I will create. Now the thing is that I will create first a database because data which database should be there first of all. Uh, then after that I will create a backend application. Then I will create a front end application. So it's a like uh, what we say downfall approach or waterfall approach kind of things I'm, I'm following. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just doing three tier. So uh, what you are trying to do is on the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, mm -hmm. Even before deploying the applications that we created through the CI pipeline, uh, you will first deploy the database onto the Kubernetes cluster, uh, right? Which is the database great. manifest you already have in the Git repo. And then we will deploy the front end and back end. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I will show you the repository as well, uh, the code manifest file for that. So yeah. once you will come here, you will see the repository. Now I need to provide the database path where the uh, manifest files are present yes. so i will go to kubernetes manifest files and in the database folder i do have my uh, sections i do have my manifest file so currently i am not using stateful set so i am using uh, deployment.yaml uh, file simply and this is my uh, deployment file so mm -hmm. it has some few commands to bind the ip for that it has a uh, simple base base image for that and i've configured all the like username and password of mongodb and the username and password are, are coming from kubernetes secrets perfect uh, you can see here so i have put the secrets here so like this is the simple secrets and anyone can de uh, encode, decode it 
decode, anyone can decode those credentials. Uh, you can also use Secrets Manager of AWS or Parameter Stores for that. Mm -hmm. According to that, but uh, yeah, this is the like no normal approach. Then uh, we have Service dot YAML. Okay, for that, and then after that, uh, we do have PVC. Now we are using PV and PVC for our like data persistence. So if the pod is gets deleted of database, so uh, it won't lose the data, Perfect. right? So I have provided one gigs of uh, data to my database uh, deployment. So these five are the uh, YAML files. Now, before going to do that, if you have observed that it needs a namespace uh, three tier. So that namespace I have not configured through uh, deployed YAML file. Again, this is because of the observation from the viewer side. So I need to create a, I would say namespace first. Now I will do this this thing with manually with manual approach. Yeah. So and also one thing to uh, say with respect to the database, uh, Aman, if you can go back once. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So one thing uh, you need to notice here is Aman has used a uh, persistent volume for the database for which uh, Aman has created a persistent volume class, right? So you have a PVC. Yeah. Now the important thing is that to notice. The default PVC in AWS is EBS. EBS is the default one. But again, if you don't have a CSI driver for the EBS, AWS, especially the EKS cluster, will not be able to create a EBS volume. That's why initially yes. during the EKS cluster creation, Aman has created a CSI driver for EBS as well. So this is one thing that you need to note. Yeah, so one more thing I would like to add while you are going to install Prometheus. So at that moment, you are also getting the same error that hmm. uh, it's not able to bind the PVC because you don't have EBS CSI driver or exactly. permission. Uh, yeah. it, it also needs a permission as well in the aspects hmm. of Kubernetes. So worker nodes the, needs the pol uh, policy, needs a permission for that. So like if I add the add-ons only, it won't work. You need to add permissions as well. So there is Perfect. one more observation that I've seen. Perfect. Yeah, so now whatever where i was there or like where I was. Uh, you were on the terminal uh, you were creating the yeah, i was creating a namespace, uh, namespace. So i will create a namespace three tier so yeah the namespace has been created now we are ready to deploy our database so i just will i will just copy this path hmm. and it will now in the destination so like repository you have already set up and this is sync policy automatic is good and mm. self field. So if, if the pod is getting terminated or restarting, so it's getting terminated because of some error. So it will uh, do self help, help yeah. kind of things, right? So mm. yeah, project name default application uh, should be in the lower case, not in the upper case. Then cluster URL, this will be default service and the namespace. So I need to three tier. space mm. here, three tier, right? Uh, then after that, I will click on create. So as soon as you will do that, you will see that sync. If everything is, uh, goes well, so you will see that synced well. Then, yeah, it's healthy. Everything is healthy, and you can see that uh, PV has been created. Mongo volume claim like PVC has been created for that. Secrets hmm. are there, services are there, and deployments are there. You Perfect. Can say, right. Amazing. Yeah. So the database yeah. is uh, deployed Confident. through the Argo. Yeah. Yes. Argo. Yeah. So if you want to see anything like what kind of services that resources has been created, so you can check it out here. So we haven't created any CI pipeline for database. We have deployed it directly. CI pipeline is created for front end and back end. Yeah, like mostly uh, for database, I've seen that people are using RDS and yes. uh, document DB according to that, uh, like managed database so base, base service. Yeah. So yeah. This is not a best best practices I can say, but it's still uh, it's a simple approach. If you are not aware of the next level, this is a ba basic monstack application, right? So it's good to have this kind no, no, of. No, that's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. 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 So this is the uh, pods. Are, our pods are running. Our services services are running. And if you want to see the PVCs, you can also check the PVCs, PV and PVCs. Yeah. I mean, if that was not created, your database will not be up as well. Yeah. Exactly right. So it it it, it needs. It's a, it's a there is a dependency for that. Yeah. So yeah, for that we have set up the database part. Now we are going for backend. 
okay so i will just write three tier backend project name will be default the things will remain same and mm -hmm. repository name is remains same now instead of database i will provide backend here so as uh, the backend service up and running so it will try to connect with the database so it should like uh it should be in sync status otherwise yeah. uh, if not able to connect then it will throw an error so our pods will not get created or it will getting restarted again and again so that's why i'm going reverse in a reverse approach perfect yeah so now i'm ready to create the application for backend yeah so it's taking time for it if you use the latest version ui might be little different but the all the fields that aman is uh, showing will be exactly same okay okay yeah, yeah I, i will do that actually so yeah api is running a uh, few pods are running and Perfect. i can say yeah pods are getting creating uh, the one pod has been created now, now the second pod already create getting created okay Very so nice. yeah both front end and database has been created now the next thing is a uh, front end that we need to set up there is a spelling mistake in front end if you want to fix <laughs> i think it's uh, front, okay right? uh, my bad yeah <laughs> looking at screen yeah. for a long time <laughs> yeah okay and again i will provide the front end front path end. for my perfect data. yeah and then three tires now hmm. okay so we are ready to create an application for front end as well so it has only one pod and i api has two pods like you can accordingly you can change accordingly if you want very so nice I just put here for observation that's the main thing yeah okay so yeah pods is, a container is getting created and it's already in the running state so Perfect. you can't access this container right now because uh, it's in a cluster type uh, yeah. it has the service cluster type so that's why we are going to use ingress for it okay so i am going to use a uh, three tier i can write it three tier ingress hmm. and the project will be remain same then repository name would be same then now the ingress file is i uh, stored in root directory or in kubernetes manifest file root directory i am saying so this is my yaml file now let me just show you these things so like there may, there might be some issue or let, let let let's check what we can do so the main thing is that uh, we are using namespaces there three tier right we need a api version yeah that's that's the basic concept i have added Uh, annotations for that that it will be listening on 80 port you can also add the like 443 according to your if you do have ssl certification uh, ssl certificate of your domain so i am doing it through domain you can also try to do without domain if you want to do that and i have already uh, configured probes right so there are three kinds of probes startup probes liveness probes and readiness probes so i have configured all the three probes in that this application so as like as soon as it will uh, up and running so it will check yeah. for those probes i mean uh, intentionally aman has separated the ingress file because you know at this point of time you can stop the video and you can try to access the application it will not be accessed from external world because the applications are deployed basically in the service type of cluster so exactly. even if you try to do it as node port you cannot access it from outside either you have to change exactly. the service type to load balancer or use the ingress resource exactly right so let, let me just show one more thing related to props so there are props you can see that uh, there are there are differences right startup props for uh, to check the application liveness props to restart the application or restart the pod if the pod is not creating and like so on for readiness probe so that kind of things you need to uh, configure in your real time environment so yeah So right now we are going to deploy ingress uh, our ingress file so let me just uh, provide the other things as well three tier application and i will create the ingress for it so let's see like uh, did we provide the ingress path yeah so the ingress path was already in the kubernetes manifest file so okay 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 yeah so yeah yeah i have kept it here okay let me just check the argo cd so yeah it's already also is healthy the ingress is also healthy yeah it's here 
so if you want to see the see you can't access right now you need to add the dns right in your uh, in your route 53 that's so the main thing if someone does not have this domain uh, should we also show how they can create or uh, they can use any local domain like they can do the local mapping like if you will click on this uh, so you will get that uh, i am able i am trying to access this domain but uh, right now this domain is not mapped to my dns so let's check first of all uh, dns that it should create uh, yeah so you can see here that uh, this domain is for our argo cd now i was saying that we need to conf uh, we need to check aws load balancer controller right uh, we, we were trying to validate it so now we can validate that it has created uh the load balancer with the help of load balancer controller Perfect. so now it's in it's in a provisioning state so now it's in a it's active state so we can't access it di directly if you are trying to access uh, so mostly it won't work in that way so what we can do we can just uh, map this domain to our, uh, map this uh, dns name to our route 53 domain so i have like i have a domain that i think i have i bought from pogbond.com uh, that is like they have provided free domain for a for one year so you can like refer to that and you can get the one domain from there now then after that you can what you can do that you can go to your domain you need to yeah i can understand that you need to uh, add those name servers in your original domain uh, buyer then after that what you will do that you will create a record first of all i need to delete this record because it's a dummy record okay now we are ready to create a record okay so click on create record and my domain was let me just show you the domain so my domain was aman patak devops dot study now mm -hmm. what i will do i won't add any uh, other sub domain or record name for it okay and the record type is a because we are using aws load balancer type now yeah. i don't have any value like a specific ip for so that i will use alias Uh, that's why alias has been given then you will mm -hmm. provide the endpoint so what what is the endpoint so for me alias to application and classic load balancer is there mm -hmm. then after that you need to provide the region as well so right now i'm using my region is us east 1 mm -hmm. then it will show you all the load balancer listed here then you can see kates 3 tier main lb perfect and you can click on create record okay so as soon as you like click on it so it will take around 2 uh, to 3 minutes to populate it in like in in excel india i can say so we'll try to do that so it, right now it's showing this site can can't be reached but yeah. just uh, it will take 1 to 2 minutes for the 1 to 2 minutes right so meanwhile you can uh, check our application is running uh, all all four application and along with that you can check all the resources that have been created in three tier through yeah so you can see that uh, for back end has two ports front end has one port mongodb has one port the services that is uh, exposed to cluster ip only so uh, we don't need we don't need to exp uh, expose our applications outside of the cluster uh, we are using for that we are using our ingress controller right Perfect. so i can also try to list ingress of uh, cube cutter for that uh, yeah. then you can see that uh, address is this Uh, we are getting and on port 80 so i don't need to write any port for that so yeah everything is working fine now let's try might be it's working or you can yeah so it's working actually from incognito mode let me try from here or you can just clear the cache and try it again but usually uh, do i mean you need to try it a couple of times because sometimes because of the cache sometimes it also takes time to uh, because aman was mapping the record as well right so sometime it will also take time yeah yeah exactly i need to just site settings i need to go into that i am not sure uh, you can just search for cache yeah cache okay, cache okay. yeah yeah that that one hmm. is right yeah that should be there so it's now not it's working i think i can see yeah no it's working perfect yeah so this is the like our application and if i will add tasks so yeah also you can try to inspect so you can see that where it's listing okay 
so the main thing is that uh, maybe few folks will say that you are exposing your backend to outside of the cluster that is not a best practices for that you can use internal load balancer you need yeah. to create a separate load balancer which is a internal type of load balancer right now that thing i uh, didn't do no but, no i think yeah. this is good enough like because yeah, you know so. for someone uh, even if people could manage to try to do this entire thing i think that's a pretty good uh, end to end demonstration for yourself and also for your project exactly now if i will click on delete so it will work accordingly and if you will say now if i will try to ex uh, access this uh, to do list so you can also try to get that that uh, task is kubernetes so this is back end application i can say running <clears throat> outside of the cluster but you can yeah you can uh, expose it to only within the cluster without use uh, with using internal load balancer right so yeah that thing has been done i can say uh, if you want to like uh, know that like the main thing is that we are using pvc right so if i will delete that this pod so still it will have the uh, the same thing uh, like the same data it will have so do you want me to do that or like let it be yeah you can show you can show yeah. hmm. okay so let me just uh, add few few more things so it will be easy our procedure so uh, this is our end to end like application for our to deploy our mon stack application now the last part is to configure monitoring on Perfect. our eks cluster that will be done through prometheus and grafana we are going to use so yeah let's like let's do that there are a lot of things we need to like configure so yeah so first of all like uh, that thing will be done from jump servers itself okay yeah so yeah there are like uh, we are going to install or configure prometheus and grafana with the help of helm so for that i have a repository a helm repository i need to add this is one of the prerequisites uh, helm repository that i need to uh, use then after that i will use the command helm repo add this is the repository you can like refer to the blog perfect and then you will see that helm repo is has been added we also cluster. have these steps in our uh, documentation right even in exactly. your medium blog we have yeah. these hmm. yeah right exactly now we need to install this repository hmm. and click on it so this will install all the components uh, okay then you can check the things get so it uh, it has been deployed uh, like uh, prometheus things has been deployed in the default namespace okay got it so you will see uh, cube cuttle get all and you will see that a uh, few of them so are the services are will be will take time to deploy hmm okay so yeah okay just give me a moment yeah so alert manager is working right now so it's working pvc is working i need to check yeah so our prometheus server is up and running right now Perfect. so it will take around like 40 to 50 seconds to configure each and everything because it needs pv and pvcs as well yeah. so yeah now uh, we need to expose our uh, prometheus server to outside of the uh, cluster to access the like we, we need to see what kind of targets we are getting from the prometheus okay yeah. so for that i need to expose it right now it's uh, on the cluster ip and on port 80 okay so let's hmm. add in the service of this prometheus server and i will just uh, change the service name from cluster ip to load balancer amazing yeah or you can also create ingress but you know every time instead of ingress because just we are doing this demonstration we are changing the service type to load balancer yeah exactly uh, it's according to the requirement i can say or like right now it's a demonstration so yeah yes i, I found this one easy so that's why so Definitely. external ip yeah we have found this external ip now uh, we are not going to right now we are not going to hit this ip because it will take time again yes in this right so in eventually it will creating through ccm cloud control manager so it will take yeah. time yeah now we are going to uh, 
to the next step which is grafana okay uh, so we will add the repository of for grafana which is again it's stuck okay meanwhile i can try to hit it yeah if anyone does not feel comfortable with sessions manager you can also enable ssh access and try to use your mobile xterm putty or any fancy uh, terminal that you have exactly right so let me check uh, i've created on 1044 okay it's taking time so yeah no yeah. issues okay yeah so right now we are in our jump server so uh, we are going to add the repository for our helm so this is our helm charts okay then i will run the helm repo update to update the changes then i will install this helm chart with the help of this command okay yeah now again the same thing we need to do uh, let me first of all check whether the grafana server is up and running or not mm -hmm. uh, get all okay. so we can see that a uh, grafana pod is like up and not it's, it's still not it's still running them yeah getting update yeah meanwhile let me check are we able to Okay. Yes, yeah, so again, it's working in incognito mode, and now now it's working. In, yeah, so we are able to see our Prometheus dashboard. Okay. Perfect. So yeah, there are targets we can see uh, related to EKS cluster that Kubernetes nodes are two out of two are up, and regions according to that you can see. So like this is our like mediator to export the. logs or uh, other things all the metrics and logs to grafana right so for that we are going to use it uh, let uh, me check i mean in grafana we will use prometheus as a data source uh, yeah, that data is data source. Uh, what true. aman's trying to say so for that first we need prometheus and we will scrape the metrics then we will see that on the grafana dashboard yeah we can also use alerts manager in prometheus but yeah, yeah. like that, that will be used so that so right now grafana pod is up and running so hmm. again i will go i will get the services name of grafana and i will close it expose the service again uh, to the load balancer yeah queue cut so the port is 80 for that so we don't need to provide any other port for that hmm accessing it but i'm doing it in the real world just like how aman has created a domain for the monstag application you will have the domains for the prometheus grafana and every time you create an ingress exactly. service for that yeah so like you you can just simply map that prometheus dot uh, your sub main domain yes. right for that kind yes. of things you can do so right now it has created one more domain uh, yeah the third one domain is so it will again it will take time but uh, meanwhile we can fetch the uh, secrets that we need to access the gra uh, grafana dashboard right perfect so let me just check it out so there is a one uh, secrets store you could do get secret for grafana now you can see that uh, there is one secrets now yeah. you just need to uh, check the 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 same way the way like we have done for argo cd we are going to use the same way uh, edit secrets grafana and we will get this admin password or the other way was uh, we can use uh, the there is one command let me just Okay, it's stuck. Okay. <laughs> Let me meanwhile. So now we are able to log in. Like we are able access to access the Grafana dashboard. Yeah, access the Grafana dashboard. And it's taking time. Let me check this one. Okay. So I do have one command uh, to get the to fetch the secrets of Grafana admin password. so this is a command and it will give you the password for it it is exactly same uh, just that yeah, exactly. amanas done it from the terminal yeah. 
yeah yeah basics so without going like without editing or without getting the secrets you can directly yeah uh, do this with the help of json path command you can do that so yeah. now it will ask for uh, admin or password and user username and password and you can write the admin name is the username and password you need to copy and paste okay so now we are like we are able to access our grafana now we need to create a data source so data source our data source is our prometheus yeah. so we need to create your, our first data source which is prometheus so we will click on prometheus then the data source has been added then i need to provide my uh, prometheus we, url prometheus server url so the yeah. prometheus server url is this uh, i i will just copy and paste the dns name of it and yeah so the prometheus server is able like it's i have put it here now i will click on the, there are a lot of uh, things we need, we can configure but uh, right now we are not going to configure those things we are yeah. simply click on save and test and if the save uh, it will show you whether it's able to connect with the, it or not so if you will okay. see any error so you need to see your url uh, whether your your url is correct or not now you, we can see that successfully queries queried from the prometheus api so we are able to see now we can go directly uh, to the dashboard and we can create our own dashboard so i will click on this dashboards and click on new and i will import dashboards and there are a lot of ids i would say uh, for that to get the uh, configurations or the uh, lot of yeah. uh, we say yeah uh, so basically Prometheus has some default dashboards where you know if you don't want to create your dashboard right from the scratch, they have also some very good dashboards with uh, you know pre-configured values. So we can use one of those uh, yeah, so IDs. Six, there, there are IDs right here. Yeah. yeah. So there are uh, two to three IDs I, I was using usually. So six four one seven. You just need to uh, add the ID and then then just you need to select the data source which was like Prometheus. earlier configured. Mm -hmm. Then we can import it and now you can see that uh, there are pod capacity and if you want to use uh, for the particular namespace so you can check it out the dashboard so you can see that our uh, deployment replicas are four uh, updated replicas number Perfect. of nodes how nodes are and then if i want to create one more dashboard so for that i will like i do have one more id that will show you a few of the things if you don't want to use these IDs, you can create your own dashboard your from the dashboard. scratch. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the dashboard. The all the memory usage per container you can check out. Check mm -hmm. it out. That front end is using two to four twenty twenty four RAM, uh, one seventy two using by Prometheus server. So yeah, there are a lot of logs. Uh, not not oh. logs. But you are you can check it out. Bo pod CPU usage, total pod memory usage. So yeah. yeah. You can get to see a lot of insight, right? Because you can see Argo CD, Prometheus, Grafana, your application, CPU consumption, RAM, everything sorted out. Exactly. So th that's the main thing, like for for mon monitoring, right? So yeah. So each and everything I, we have configured uh, in the monitoring part as as well. So yeah. So we are like we have completed our like demo. I can say that we have started from creating infrastructure. And we have deployed our front end and front end backend application along with database. We can say Monstack application, and we have integrated our uh, Prometheus and Grafana along with the monitoring tool. Amazing. Yeah. 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 So that's it. That's it. I I think I think this is the uh, complete end to end demonstration uh, that is available on YouTube uh, because we have done right from. We haven't even created infrastructure manually. We have configured uh, infrastructure through Terraform, and that is also integrated with Jenkins. So you have the infrastructure part completely automated. Then we have done the deployment through the CI Jenkins, and sorry, the CI part through Jenkins and deployment through Argo CD. We have also used a custom domain. Then finally, we have also done the monitoring part for that. So. I can say we have done great job and I think subscribers will love it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you so it. much, Shaman. Uh, finally, I would like to say, I, I don't think I would have been uh, able to record it alone <laughs> without uh, your help. So thank you so much. Thank and you. even yeah, even me, I need you because like somewhere you put it me in the right direction. So oh, yeah, thank you thanks. for that. Well. 
Thanks, Abhi. Thank you, Abhishek. And uh, please make sure you look at the documentation if you are stuck somewhere because Aman has also curated this document. We will put the Medium blog post and the GitHub repository link in the description. So anywhere, if you feel you are stuck while watching the video, you can also look at the documentation, but try to focus more on the video part. Yeah, exactly. The main thing is that video is good. Yeah, I can see. So that's all we have for the demonstration. Thank you so much for watching today's video. See you all. Take care. Bye bye.